this is Wendy here with my very first reaction video. And um, I'm going to give a very short intro to the channel, which is that I review music, uh, musical numbers, dance numbers, etc., all from before I was born, which for reference is 1974. Um, I am really interested in media uh, like that of all kinds, and uh, there's plenty of things that I would love to react to that I have seen, and plenty of things I would love to react to that I haven't seen, or that people recommend me, which, you know, eventually could become a thing. So without further ado, I'm going to dig in to a very famous number from a rather famous film, Top Hat, which is a Ginger Rogers Fred Astaire film from 1935, which makes it 89 years old. Um, it was made the year before my mother was born and um, when my dad was two. Um, so they didn't see these movies in the theater, but I actually grew up watching uh, tons and tons of like 1930s, 1940s, 1950s musicals, especially MGM. This one, I don't think is MGM. I think this is RKO, um, which was the studio they were with before they moved over to MGM. And uh, this is usually rated as the top um, Astaire Rogers musical. And the number I'm going to react to is a really famous one. Um, I thought I'd start out with one I had seen. Um, I don't know, flip the coin. Uh, and uh, it is without Ginger Rogers. It is Fred Astaire and a whole line of backup dancers uh, who dance in a rather unique way. So let's start this video. Top Hat, White Tie and Tails, 1935. Got an invitation through the mail. Your presence requested this evening is formal. Top hat, white tie, tails. Nothing now could take the wind out of my sails. Cause I'm invited to step out this evening in top hat, white tie, and tails. Stopping for the first time. I want, if you're not familiar with Fred Astaire, or even if you do and haven't seen him in a while, to pay attention to how effortless he makes everything look. I don't think anything he does is effortless. Even when he'd done these things thousands of times, I think he was such a perfectionist that he was, in fact, paying attention. Watch the movements he makes with that cane. I mean, when I try to do a baton throw or twirl a baton, it's like, but even if you compare it to like a professional cheerleader, the things he does with it are crazy. And look how um, how in sync with the beat he is. Same thing um, when he's using it and he's wrapping on the piece of paper. I think he's just behind the beat. Um, it's amazing. Um, and you know that that's not even to address the whole issue of him tap dancing, like. That just looks like, you know, I'm just standing here skipping around. And that is not only difficult, but he's up there with like the very high difficulty and he's doing it to a track and he's recording it and he's got guys in sync. Um, I don't know how many takes this took, but he was a perfectionist, so I'm assume a few. Sorry, talk too long. Let's move on with the production. Oh, I'm putting on the top hat. Tying up my white tie, brushing off my tails. I'm dooting up my shirt front, putting in the shirt studs, polishing my nails. I'm stepping out, my dear, to breathe an atmosphere that simply reeks with class. And I trust that you'll excuse my dust when I step on the gas, or I'll be there. Putting down my top hat, my 
mussing up my white tie. That's the end of the tale. Okay. So now we're actually breaking into the first bit of tap dancing in here. So not only is it Fred Astaire dancing, tap dancing, but this whole row of guys, and I, I didn't count them, but I'd say, you know, 18 or 20. So at sometimes they, they sort of mirror him, and sometimes uh, they're not exactly mirroring him, but they're definitely playing off one another, um, and they're all synchronized with the music. Um, top hat, white tie, and tails. Um, so it might even be worthwhile to do a watch where um, you watch Fred Astaire the first time and then the second time, watch what the guys are doing in the background. One more thing about the guys in the background, and I always think about this when I see a number like this, or especially a Busby Berkeley number, is thinking about the supply of dancers that must have been in Hollywood at the time. And I guess each studio would have had, I don't know, 200 dancers. Um, and the other thing is that I think a lot of times, like all the men had to be the same size and all the women had to be the same size, um, very similar to the Rockettes. Um, so just, just think about that. So how many did RKO have? And um, how many uh, did MGM have? And all the, all the studios that did musicals. Um, they're extras, but they're like, not even extras, they're like performers, but they're in big groups. So um, just wanted to comment on that. Now we're gonna get into um, some tap dancing. working up to a crescendo and I think the uh, group of guys are all about to appear in the background again. So I thought I'd stop it here. Um, <laughs> I, um, again, uh, just want to talk about just the sheer wonder that is uh, Fred Astaire's dancing um, and just his, his, his bodily control um, you know, I said effortless, um, but he almost seems weightless at times. Like, I don't know, like he's a hologram or or something like that. Um, when you see some, you know, other dancers, like male dancers of this era, or, you know, even a little later, I'm talking about like Gene Kelly, they are doing amazing work, whether, you know, they're tap dancing or doing stuff that's more like ballet or whatever it is, but they have like a, a build and a, a way that they dance that's more athletic. Like, I wouldn't say that Gene Kelly has a lighter than air feel, but Fred Astaire does. Um, it's something unique to him, really. Um, I think that women might tend to have this quality more often, um, which leads me to think, I wonder how tall Fred Astaire was. I do know that most Hollywood stars, especially of that era, are a lot shorter than you think they are. So I think they might've shot this to you know, look like Fred Astaire is always the tallest person in the room, like six feet, but he might've been 5'8", and Ginger Rogers was you know 5'2", or something like that. 
Um, let's continue with this. Um, I have some further comments I want to make, but I'm going to wait for a better spot. Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, this is where he has a, a conversation with an invisible person. Fake, yes. What is he, dancing in an alley in Paris? Oh, they're back. Uh-oh, this is the awesome part. You could never do this today. Ever. Especially the part where he does like a machine gun, like a gangster movie. Oh, this is hilarious. So, if you combine the, the theme. That guy's standing. I need to talk about him at some other time. He's quite a character and appears in, um, he definitely appears in this movie, but I think he's in a, a couple of other. <laughs> movies that were, uh, Tracy Darren Paul. Rogers. Oh, okay. So I'll put this over here. So, um, for those of you who've never seen a snare dance or maybe even haven't seen a 1930s musical, um, what did you think? Um, I would say this is pretty typical of the production quality of a lot of the films that, um, came out of studios, um, say definitely RKO, which I'm 90% sure is the studio that they made this with, um, the quality that they had, um, and the choreography and they had fantastic music. Um, so, I mean, they had, uh, musicals that were, you know, Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Cole Porter. Um, they had um, just, you know, tons and tons of, of, of people who I can't even name who were coming up with these musicals. Um, and sometimes they'd be reusing songs um, from other musicals, or sometimes they would um, use a whole variety of their own songs and sort of make them into a plot. Um, Classic example is Easter Parade, which was all Irving Berlin catalog songs from the early 1900s, even though it was shot, you know, a lot later. Um, and then sometimes they would actually um, write an entire musical um, for a film. So anyways, um, this is my first reaction video. Um, I think I've done it without stumbling too much. And um, I hope that at some point someone sees this. I might have to wait years for that, but we shall see. Thanks all.